Hey guys, Jim Vest here. I want to mention and talk about something I've noticed in the gym, and that is a lot of guys that are kind of just starting out. And when I say just starting out, I don't mean any offense by that. I'm not trying to insult you if you've been doing this for a little while, and I'm lumping you into that category, but uh, let's not worry about semantics. Let's get on to it. What I've noticed a lot of times, it seems to me like a lot of you guys don't understand how to organize your workouts. Don't understand what order to place the exercises in. And maybe aren't, aren't really clear on why and how you want to arrange your body parts as you break it up over your, your period of time from where you train your whole body. If it's every seven days, if it's every five, or whatever the hell it is you're doing. Now personally, me, you know, when I first started out, back in the 80s, everybody did, uh, you know, double split routine thing. That was just too much for me. I made progress because initially you're going to grow almost just from picking the weights on and off of the equipment. As long as you're eating to support that, you're going to grow. You're going to progress because it's that much more work than what you normally do. Um, so I, I, I put some size on. I got larger, but I was stuck at like... I think I just barely hit 200 pounds body weight. I think I was stuck there. And the reason I was stuck there is because uh, it was just the workload was too great. I just couldn't eat to overcome the workload. It was too much work. So I was burning too much. And being a smaller guy, I wasn't able to consume the calories I really would have needed to make ideal progress out of that type of approach. So I eventually settled on... Uh, working my entire body over the period of a week with pretty much one on one off one on one off now there are exceptions if i feel particularly good if i'm trying to target something and bring up something really quickly i may do uh do away with some of those rest days one or two of them or i may make different exceptions okay and then when it comes to stuff like calves uh, i do that more frequently I, I put that in with something else normally at the beginning of the workout, and that elongates the overall time I'm in the gym, of course, because calves, I've seen some of you guys come in there and do calves, you don't have any calves. The reason you don't have any calves is because the guys I've seen that don't have any are only training them for 10 or 15 fucking minutes. They're not gonna grow from that, all right? A couple sets aren't gonna make them grow. You gotta do a few different exercises, hit them from different angles, um, and you gotta stretch them all the way down. Push all the way up on your toes and stretch them all the way down, okay? The negative portion of it. A lot of you guys don't have any, I don't know if you don't have any flexion in there or, or whatever. If it's a matter of uh, flexibility, I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, you got to do more to make them grow than that. That shit's not going to impress them. You walk around on them all day long. You stand on them all day long. You run on your toes. You reach up for things on your toes. It's not going to get the job done. You got to go harder than that. It takes more work. So I will do calves a few times a week. And uh, other stuff like forearms, I'll throw in on arm day. I'll do that once a week, uh, but I train forearms with a cable machine. I'll show you guys on video sometime. I find it most effective. Um, also, my shoulders. I break my shoulders up into three different, three different approaches, let's, let's say. You know, three different workouts. Uh, I split the heads up, and I'll do the head with its related body part. For instance, when I do, you know, benches on chest day, I'm training my uh, my anterior front deltoid head. And I haven't really seen a whole lot of guys that do a lot of chest work that have small anterior delts. So I don't really do a whole lot of specific work for them. But I do a lot of uh, medial delt. I do a lot of rear delt. Uh, of course, rear delts with back. And I'll do it after I've done my back workout. I'm not going to pre-fatigue the motherfucker so that I can't really pull any weight. Uh, or that I injure it, and I'll do the medial delt, and I'll throw that medial delt in with uh, on chest day. I may do some extra medial delt on back day. I may do some on arm day. Depends on how I'm feeling, what they're looking like, and how they're feeling, and how hard I worked them last. So shoulders and calves are an exception. You know, I'll, I'll break those up throughout the week. So I'm not even going to consider that when I when I mention this. Now. What I'll do is I'll break the thing up so that I'm training my entire body over the course of seven days, 
with plenty of rest because you don't grow in the gym you grow when you're resting you grow when you're putting the shit in your body you're supposed to put in there the nutrition all right you don't build muscle in the gym you do the damage in the gym the workout's catabolic you grow outside the gym when you're doing what you're supposed to do so you need to do that as much as you know spend as much effort concentrate on that focus on that as much as you do focus on the actual workout which some of you aren't focusing enough you got to get in there and sweat if you're not sweating you ain't doing shit number one look around the gym how many motherfuckers are sweating you got to break a sweat dude all right but what i'll do is i'll say i'll work out monday then i'll take off tuesday then i'll work out wednesday then i'll take off thursday i'll work out friday take off saturday work out sunday usually that's how i'll do it and i'll break the body up so that in the totality of that seven day period i've worked the entire body head to toe I'll break it up into parts and different workouts for each day I'm in the gym. Uh, okay, say Monday I come in and I do, and I work largest part and smallest part. Obviously, I'm not going to do arms first in the week. I know you all want big arms because you want to walk around in short sleeve shirts and, and people can know you work out or at least have suspicion that you work out, right? But that's not how it works. If you do arms first in the week, then you're not going to be able to pull what you need to pull on back day. You're not going to be able to press what you could press on chest day. So I work arms last in the week because they're involved in so many other things. They're links in the chain. All right? Arms come last in the week. Smallest, largest part and smallest part. Now, Sunday is probably going to be usually always my leg day. Now, Sunday I'm in the gym like an hour and a half. That's the longest workout. Other than that, I'm in and out in 45 minutes to an hour most of the time. I don't want to be in there any longer than necessary. Remember, it's catabolic. I'm in there tearing it up. I want to get out and get to growing and healing. So Sunday will be my leg day. Okay, then Monday, I will come right behind that. I won't take off Monday. I'll come right in Monday, and I'll either do back or chest. Depends how my back's feeling from that leg day. If my back is uh, beat up and I still decide to do it, I'll focus more on width. And I'll do more upper back and, and middle back. And I won't really fuck with those erectors a whole lot. Because normally that's what's going to be fatigue if I did a whole lot of legs. If it's not so beat up, then I'll go ahead and do it. If it's really fucked up and I don't want to, you know, uh, compromise the back workout, I'll do the back workout Wednesday and I'll do my chest workout on Monday. Okay, then Tuesday I'll have off. Then Wednesday it's going to be back or chest, whichever I didn't do Monday. Then Thursday I'll have off. Then Friday I'll come in and do arms then saturday i'll have off and then sunday it's legs again so that's how i do it all right now as far as exercises how you organize your exercises it's the same thing same thing biggest to smallest i'm not going to come right in there and do uh you know something that hits the uh, for arm day for example i'm not going to come in there and open up with concentration curls i'm not going to come in there and open up with hammer curls all right, I'm not going to come in here and open up with some kind of cable curl shit, unless it's just a warm-up. And normally my warm-up is going to be the exact exercise I'm getting ready to blast. That's the most effective warm-up. Warm-up is going to mimic the actual movement I'm trying to warm up for. All right, that treadmill shit, that's not a warm-up. That's not the kind of warm-up that's going to work for uh, anaerobic exercise, which weightlifting is. It doesn't work. All right, so like, like I was saying, arms. If I'm doing biceps, I'm going to do a barbell curls would be my first exercise. Heavy barbell curls. Then after that, I'll become more specific to work, you know, one head over the other or work the outer. Okay, then I'll specify. On back day, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to open up with, you know, maybe bent over rows, maybe deadlifts. Deadlifts would actually be ideal. And now that first exercise is the one I give it hell on. Okay. That's the most important one. You're only fresh once. When you first come in, you're fresh. You're 100%. That's the one you give it your all. All right? Then the others are just lesser exercises. They're more specific uh, isolation type things, generally. Okay, but always the first exercise is a compound movement, usually with a barbell, and it's the exercise with which I can handle the most weight and still stimulate the muscle. Okay, there is such a thing going so heavy that I can't feel it in the muscle anymore because too many other things are coming into play to make me capable of handling that weight. 
all right perfect example when I'm doing specifically doing rear delts it's very easy for me to put too much weight on I can put a lot more weight on and do the exercise and although it may still look like wow he's using a lot of weight for that but you know what I'm using too much weight because what you can't really see probably is the rear delts not getting the work it should get that works being trans you know transferred or transmitted to other muscles other things are making up for what that rear delt's not getting or unable to pull i'm still moving that weight but that rear delt's not getting not getting what it needs now whereas if i lighten up it's all rear delt and the rear delt's actually working to its fullest capacity okay because when i start to bring all these other stabilizers and shittings there's too much weight i'm actually taking it off i'm actually relieving the target muscle somewhat so you have to be very careful about that. Perfect example is when I see guys doing dumbbell rows. You weigh too much weight. They're pulling with their bicep too much. Okay, they're pulling with their with their fucking uh, obliques, twisting, doing all kind of crazy shit. Pulling with all kinds of back. You're not really pulling with your lats. Very little. If you would lighten up, do more reps with lighter weight, you're going to hit your lats more. You're going to stimulate better growth from that. If you don't believe it, try it. All right. Uh, so back day would probably be the first exercise is going to be like deadlifts. If you're really serious. For whatever reason you don't want to deadlift, do your bent over rows. Bent over barbell rows. All right. Then move on from there. As the exercises become more specific, they should be closer to the end of that workout. Simple as that. Um, chest day. I'm not going to open up with flies unless I'm trying to pre-fatigue, which I might be. But if you don't have a lot of muscle there yet, you don't have that development yet, you're wasting your time doing a whole bunch of pre-fatigue stuff and a whole bunch of isolation work. There's a lot of isolation exercises I see guys doing on the cables that you're not ready for yet. If you don't have enough muscle mass there, you can't just target one little tiny portion of that complex. You understand? All right, you don't have to believe me. Keep doing what you want to do. But what I'm telling you is the truth. Ask anybody that's really got any appreciable muscle mass. They're going to tell you the same fucking thing. And it's not a conspiracy for us all to keep you guys small. It's because it's the truth. All right, now when you do, uh, let's say you're doing, all right, cool, of course, legs. I used to squat first, and that's what I would recommend you do. But... Uh, in time, the weight with which I was squatting became so much that if I wasn't using a monitor lift, I had to actually pick it up and walk it out, especially if I was alone. It was just an unnecessary risk. So what I began to do after that, a good friend of mine, Brian Stoltz, showed me this, is I'll do like almost an hour of, you know, all kind of other leg exercises and a lot of isolation shit too. My legs will be like noodles. And then I'll get in a squat rack. That way, I don't really have to go very heavy. I mean, I can get in there and shit, and I can go 315 if I really bomb the hell out of them. And ass to grass squats, that's all the heavier I got to go. Whereas if I did squats first and opened with it, warmed up and opened with it, I got to go a lot heavier to get the same kind of stimulation. So it's safer, it's easier on my joints, and it's more stable for me if I don't have somebody there to spot me or whatever. So there are exceptions to every rule, okay? And ultimately, it's very difficult for somebody to look at you and say, you're not targeting that muscle or this or that, unless it's blatant. And a lot of things I see are blatant, okay? Because there are things that I do, especially on cables, where I can just turn a little bit or move a little bit, and I'm completely altering the focus of that exercise. And people watching it, you may not see that, the way this foot's turned or the degree at which I've got that elbow pitched or all kind of different little tiny things. And uh, it's more of a feel. And it's developed over time. So get your, get your shit together. Organize your workouts appropriately. Largest body part earlier in the week, smaller body parts later in the week. And organize the... I'll arrange the order of the exercises in each workout to make sense. Heaviest to lightest, generally. Heaviest to lightest. There's no point in doing something 
and pre-fatiguing something and beating something up, then trying to come behind it with a barbell and move a lot of weight. It ain't gonna happen. I see guys doing like front delt raises and you know lateral raises and and then they'll sit down on a bar and try and do military presses. It makes no fucking sense. All right, now to a guy that's already got a lot of muscle, he may have some kind of logic there. He may be pre-fatiguing something. He may be just burning out. He may be doing something. But you guys, makes no sense. All right, so do a little bit of uh, homework and get your workout together so that it makes sense. If you're not sure and you see me in the gym, don't be afraid to ask. And lighten up. You'll go further.